Hey, how you guys doing? This is William Mars, Man of Outdoors, back at you with another video. And today's video, we're going to do kind of a recap video. Um, I don't know, a good year, year and a half, maybe two years ago, I had to look. I did a video on the Flex Cut Carving Jack. One of my favorite tools to use for carving, you know, small, intricate details, bowls, spoons, you name it. You know, I've used this tool and uh, it served me very well for the past, I don't know, I've been using this for a long time. Pretty much almost since it first came out, you know, seen the designs for it and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I gotta have it, gotta have it. Because before something like this, you know, I'd have to carry three, four, five, six small tools with small wooden handles. And I even had one that was really cool. It was all the tools that I wanted, but they didn't have a handle on them. You know, you put the handle on each of them and then you had an Allen key that you tightened the handle down. And I thought that was really cool and it was really, you know, it was modular to my needs for my carving needs in the woods and things like that. But it was kind of a hassle. You know, it is what it is. This, it's all the tools that I pretty much want for fine, intricate carving details. Uh, say, sands, maybe a couple that I do carry for even smaller pinpoint stuff. But when I did the video on this, there was something that I seen in the comment section that really kind of, you know, I knew it was coming and it was the price point. You know, this uh, this isn't cheap. It comes, I, I, I believe right now you can get it for like 125 you know, it was at one time, it was like 150 or 180 at some places. You know, it's an expensive tool. It's not budget item. And if you're not out here carving, you know, spoons and bowls and making, recreating things that are in your kit from the woods, maybe it's not for you. Maybe you don't need it. So, you know, I could understand people are like, I'll pass on it because I really just don't need it. You know, I don't need to make that much of an investment into a tool that I'm not really going to use that much. Me, when I'm in the woods, this is always with me and probably... For say like a three to four night camping trip, I'm using this thing probably 25% of the time. You know, this thing's always being used, little carving details, showing somebody th certain things, teaching somebody certain things. But the price point <laughs> is what really got to some people. And uh, so I found an alternative and uh, this is, I know I'm not the first one to do a video on this, but uh, we're gonna be shooting this side by side with the flex cut is this old timer Oh, get that to focus. Focus! Alright, so, old timer by Charade. I know we all have our some issues, especially Chris now has issues with Charade. It is what it is. This is something completely different in my mind. This is every single tool, and we're going to show you side by side. This is every single tool that comes with the Flex Cut for only like 30 bucks. What was it, like 38? $35. $35. So for $35, you can get every single tool that comes with the flex cut carving jack. And I can't tell you anything about the steel. I can't tell you versus versus versus. We're not gonna think about anything like that. We're just gonna use the tools side by side. I don't even wanna know what the steel is in this. I don't, is it, do you know if it's American made? <laughs> Probably China. It's all made in Taiwan. Okay, so Taiwanese steel. It is what it is. It doesn't mean that it's junk. Absolutely not. Um, you know, for something like this, this is like I said, a small carving task, building, recreating in the woods. So, you know, you can kind of slack back on the steel quality as long as the edge keeps uh, up. Now, the one thing that I will say about that is the Flex Cuff Carving Jack comes with a block of wood like this that has certain intricate designs cut in it that allows you to get into. Uh, say you know that you know stropping that out you can kind of see how that would be a little bit of an issue it can be done without the tools that they provide it just is a little bit of an issue so as long as the steel keeps its edge I'm gonna definitely be recommending this because for $35 versus 150 or 125 you know what I could say right now is the flex cut locks the flex cut has a lock on the back of it, locks things in place. The old timer does not. That is one thing that you can think of maybe as a eh, kind of a negative to it because it does not lock. It does have a little bit of a snap to it, but it does not lock. That being said, nine times out of ten, you're going to be dragging or pushing. You're not going to have any kind of uh, a negative force on the blade to make it fold on to itself. So a negative yes, a big negative no in my opinion. 
So what we're gonna do is side by side, we're gonna use both of these tools. And just from the feel, you know, this is just literally a per, pretty much a straight back. So it's gonna have a pretty rigid feel to it. Well, this is a little bit more fluid at this point. I can't say because I'm not even using the tools. I'm just feeling them in my hand. A little bit more fluid here, maybe a little bit less here, but again, $35, 150 bucks. You know, for $35, you're gonna get one heck of a tool. So let's get some wood and get to it. All right, so we're back out here in the woods and what we're gonna do is we're gonna split one piece of wood and me and my brother Gary here, We're gonna kind of gonna go through showing him some steps uh, on like carving simple bowls and some spoon ideals and things like that, some techniques that I've learned throughout the years. And we're gonna kind of switch these tools back and forth between the two of us. And that way you're gonna have not just my view on it, but you know, Gary's view on, on the tool as well. Uh, a little bit of maybe of a carving novice, would you say? Yeah, I'm definitely a carving novice. Okay, okay. So we'll get kind of a, a novice rookie view on the two blades, uh, the tool two tool systems say that three times fast and you know my view on it I'm not I'm not an expert or anything like that it's been maybe doing it a little bit longer you know <laughs> so my view on it and Gary's view on it as well so I'm gonna split this out and then wow I'll give you a half give you some tips and pointers on how to start how to begin and then well, we'll get this started we'll get this done so the area for my spoon the bowl of my spoon is the most important part to me Handles are really easy, they're straight handles, unless I'm doing something intricate well, where I have a dip or, or something in the, uh, in the, in the uh, handle itself. So what I do is I start out with kind of like an egg shape, because that's the basic shape of a spoon itself. And I try to be as symmetrical as possible, that way the piece looks good in the end. And I draw the whole circle even though that, you know, there's going to be handle attached because that gives me just a point of reference around the circumference of the bowl itself so I mean this isn't perfectly symmetrical but we're just trying to do this Johnny on the spot style so I'll extend this end out a little bit more and get something that looks like this hopefully you can see that in camera there you go so this is my baseline for my handle so I can flip around and get carving into some tight, tighter spots, get better angles. This will be the start of my bowl and then the handle, which the handle will not exceed that baseline there. So there you go. So let Gary kind of draw out his bowl and then we'll get to reviewing these two tools. So what I always start out with when I'm doing a spoon is I always start out with the, with the bowl. Because if I'm gonna have a catastrophic failure at any time, any point in time, it's gonna be in the bowl or this point right here where the bowl meets the handle. Nine times out of 10, that's where my catastrophic failure is gonna be. So I'll get the basic shape of it out and then I might carve a little bit of the bowl and then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna switch to a tool that can do some real like taking out of meat of this wood. So I'll get my basic outlines and then I'll switch to like maybe a sauce piece or something take some real hunks of wood out, get the major majority of the meat out of this wood that I want out, and then we'll start carving. But right now, let's focus on these bowls right now. And uh, if you want, what I do on the reverse side of this wood is I will plane out a flat spot. So I can flip this over and I, I can work on a flat area like here, then bring it up. And, you know, when I'm carving these bowls and spoons and stuff, the, the, the piece is always spinning and flipping and twirling. I look like some kind of freaking ballerina with a piece of wood in my hand. <laughs> so what I do well, is... That actually makes a lot of sense because then you can turn around and cover every angle. Right, so I just kind of get a small flat spot going. You're gonna be carving this out anyway. So what I'm gonna do since I, uh, I I've used this flex cut for a very long time. I'm gonna actually give that to Gary. We're gonna start the bowls out with the flex cut and then we'll switch with the, uh, the old timer. So when I'm doing small bowls like this, um, I'm not very familiar with this tool, but yeah, it's the in the same spot. It's in the same spot. Yeah. So I will go with this blade here to start out with on smaller bowls. You can see small little curved blade. And that squirrel's throwing shit at us. <laughs> all right, and all that I do, Gary, is I'll start out by just making a depression. I'll put my thumb underneath the part, the piece, like just like this, and I'll just start out, just make a small little cut all the way around the bowl, just like that. 
And you know, these small little cuts, they're going to add up. It might seem like it's going to take forever, but you know, and then get your vantage points however you can. Just make sure you don't have anything in front of the blade that you don't want to cut. Like a finger. Like a finger. So when I'm working like this side of the this side of the edge of the uh, the bowl, I'll put my hand up here and I'll cut towards myself, which seems counterintuitive, you know. But I'm not going to jab myself in the heart with this thing. I'm yeah, just making small cuts just like this, and I'm bracing it up against my chest. Making small cuts just like this. Get in there and get the bowl outlined at least. That's one of the, the more important parts is just outlining your bowl so you can proceed on some more dark, deeper cuts. So now we're gonna switch back and forth here real quick so we can use side-by-side -side comparison of the tool and wow. <laughs> you can tell it, you can you can definitely tell the difference. And the tool, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from the old timer, but not yet know, at least. Straight out of the box, straight out of the box, I can, you know, I could tell after using, using just making these few cuts that that flex cut is infinitely sharper than this one. Yeah, Gary, I think you're right, brother. I think we might. That's not to take anything away from it as of yet, because I mean we could take it and sharpen it up. But an out-of-the-box comparison, as of right now, it's like it's definitely easier to use the flex cut. Okay. So when I'm carving like this, and I got this braced against me like this, again, I don't. Let me not bump the camera. I don't want to put anything in front of the blade that I don't want to cut. So I'm going to put my hand up here behind the blade. And then I just want to take small slivers of wood. I don't want to get in here and get too deep because what's going to happen is, is eventually that wood's going to get away. And then boop, pop. And all of a sudden I'm taking a big hunk out of the top of my spoon. I don't want to do that. I want to be slowed, controlled, right where I want them. And then once I go around this bowl and make small carves, make small uh, incisions <laughs> into the grain you just skip it yeah no 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 I just have some verbal ticks like what was that word that's not a word <laughs> so once I go all the way around my bowl and then I come back and I take those all those cuts out that's when I stop and I go back around, take all the cuts out, go around, take all the cuts out. That's how I control the initial carve into my bowls. Until I get deeper into the bowl, like where I am right about now, and then I could just kind of go in and yeah. dig the bowl. Out. You'll just, you know, you won't do so much damage to yourself. Okay, so I like your theory, <laughs> but. The bad thing about that is the duller your tool is, the more you're struggling to get that work done. The sharper your tool is, the more precise and slow you can be, you know. So the sharper tool, in my opinion, is definitely a more safer option. That's just, you know, it's my opinion. It's shared along others that I know. <laughs> um, especially with me. All right, I've got enough scars on my knuckles and on my hands. From using a dull blade and having that thing slip, and when it hits, it has a tendency to want to bite at that point. And by that time, it's too late, you already cut yourself. You know, this uh, the old timer version, the cheaper version, it is working. I just put a little bit of a hone on it just to get something a little better. I am start, I, I have to use a little bit more of a power assist with it but it is working all right now where will turns around and makes those little cuts around the shape and everything else so we can keep its conformity all right when i start getting towards the middle mm -hmm. all right now what i found that works for me is i just make because like I'm doing feathers, mm -hmm. yeah. and then meet it. So that way I'm not coming all the way to my edge. 
Right, and it's the so same. It's the same close. principle. So what you're doing is you're creating um, a cut in the middle, all the way to the middle, and then flipping and just meeting that cut all the way in the middle. And it's the same principle basically. It's just I'm going all the way around, making that same cut, and I'm coming all the way to where I want to stop. Which um, you know you can have an accident and, and bust through your wall there you know and, and make a cut you don't really want so if you're uh, more if you feel safer doing it that way then definitely do it that way you know I, I'm definitely not saying that my way is the only way that is nothing I'll ever say alright so just to move on you know I'm going to be showing Gary uh, some more stuff but I want to get into more of the, the tools of this you know so I'm very familiar with the flex cut <laughs> So I'm gonna move on with the tools that this offers. You know, it offers some. Uh, it offers the same tools, but this like gourd basically is a really nice tool. Um, show that up to the camera. Basically, the same tool. It's just okay. a flat, you know, straight chisel almost. And you know, it's good for getting in here and making those. Oh wow. Okay, right away I can tell that this is a lot more springy, a lot more flexible. Can you take this? Put that tool away. Put sure. that same tool out. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, there's people out here walking. All right, so to use this this tool, you really got to put a little bit of a pressure into it, you know, and to get that out. Now, using that and feeling how stiff that is, switch. That's actually that's actually a little bit thicker metal. Can I use that one? See that flex in it? That's not good. Yeah. Because that means you're gonna have to put your finger right here and then you're gonna uh -huh. risk getting getting hit something with a splinter. Splinter and you just and closed it, it didn't lock. So what Gary was lock. doing when he was using this, um, you know, he was in here and he was getting ready to to, to push in to get a, a sliver out and he actually went a little bit of negative pressure and he and it, it actually, closed the blade a little. It so, actually flexed yeah. the blade a little bit to a closed position which can pinch the finger. So as you can see this has a heck of a lot more flex than the flex cut on her ironically enough. So that's one thing I don't like. That's definite negative in my opinion. But it's still I still am not passing on that tool exactly. So I'm gonna switch to a different tool. And as you can see I'm right here, comfortable Gary, that using that one. this gourd. Yeah, it's really definitely can, it's it's definitely taking out some meat. Yeah, it really can do a lot of work really, really fast. And then if I switch around and I just meet those cuts that I already did. You can turn around and just pop all that out mm -hmm. all at one time. And do it very quickly. You know, this video is gonna be long. This video is not something that's gonna be, you know, a five, ten minute video. We're sitting down here, we're taking our time, we're carving, we're just sitting here chit-chatting in the woods. So, you know, if you're looking for a quick video, this might not be it. If you want to sit down, hang out with us, watch us carve, and review these tools at the same time, hang out with us, stick around. So, you know, I'm not trying to get a perfect spoon out of this. You know, this is, this is a review. So I am going to switch tools here. Hello. What happened? <laughs> it slipped careful so okay so changing things up going through the blades I'm not going to be using every blade that it, it comes with this set I just want to use the ones that I use the most I guess I could say and that is the small carving knife here which is the same thing that's on the old timer so what I use that for is taking slivers nice hunks of meat out just like that You know, more detailed processing, you know, kind of overkill for what I'm doing. I wouldn't, I'd probably go to a, a main knife or even a small axe or hatchet to do this. But I'm just showing what a sharp blade like this can do. Just take little ribbons off the wood if I'm getting into to detailed work. You know, I'm going to ask you to switch me here in a second, Gary. Well, I don't know if it's ready to pull that blade out. So, see what goes on. One thing that I'm not liking here. Just start with the flex cut. Is that right there? All right, right away I can tell that 
you know, the, the blade grind is different on the, uh, the old timer. I like the, the, how the flex cut has a higher grind on it. Okay, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. All right, when you're carving like that, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to take the blade and I want you to grab it just like this. Put it in a comfortable way. I don't want to see your thumb up like that, okay? Just put your, and then grab it just like that. And Old down. habit. Old yeah, I know, habit. I know, I know. Chris does, Chris does it too, it drives me crazy. Old habit. So this is pretty similar to, it's doing a good job just like the flex cut. The blade has more flex in it than I'm kind of comfortable with, but I'm okay with it. Um, I don't like that don't lock. But again, 150 versus 300, or 150 <laughs> versus 35. <laughs> So I'm, I'm willing to give this tool uh, uh, some respect as far as that goes. Flip it over, do the same thing. And I'm just looking to get some of the meat off the wood to, to thin the blade or thin the project out a little. And I know that I'm cutting towards Gary, but it looks like we're closer together than we really are. Actually, I did move back a little bit because I wasn't as comfortable as I was. Should it be? Well, <coughs> excuse me. So that's pretty comparable to both blades. You know, I'm not seeing too much of a difference as far as that goes. Except for maybe in the flex of that blade. Yeah. It just seems a lot more sturdy, a lot more controlled with the flex cut. That flex cut is a lot more comfortable. It seems more comfortable and more sturdy, doesn't it? Yes, it is. It's actually more solid of a blade. Yeah. But, all right, and I, and I know there's going to be some people out there that's going to say this, all right, well, you can find them at a cheaper price at this location. This is true, all right? Yes, I paid 30, I paid $35 for this. I paid $35 for this model. Yeah. All right. Where'd you get it at? It don't matter. Nobody sponsored me or anything. You say where you got it from. I actually got it at a truck stop. Oh, really? <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yep. My being out on, you know, my being a trucker and my being out on the road. All right. Sometimes it affords me the opportunities to stop into places. Find some pretty unique finds, huh? And, yeah, I actually, I actually do. I actually find some pretty unique finds. Now, the box was from Charade. It said Charade on it. Uh, yeah, it said Old Timer. Old Timer? Yeah, which is... An affiliate of Charade. Which that thumb down. You have habit. more power, more control, and it's safer. See, if I'm, if I'm cutting, let me get this blade out again. Now I'll, I'll tell you this. If I'm cutting like this, you know, I, I don't feel once it's, it's very uncomfortable for me right now. But I don't feel like I have very much power and control. And then also, you see where that curl's going? Yeah, it's curl's if going. If I right get up a in thick there. enough curl yeah, that breaks off, go. it's going in my thumb. Yeah. And I just think that I have more power and control if I grab the knife like this, keep my thumb down, and I just go straight down. Now, I do use certain thumb assist for smaller detail work. Like if I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get my base of my spoon out, I will get those little tiny controlled cuts. Because what that does is it, oh, <laughs> it allows me to get the cut that I want and stop where I want. See, you know, I got a line that I don't want to pass. And then I could turn the piece around, come back in here, use my control power assist to kind of just clip those off just like that. You know. Those, that's where I'll use my thumbs to actually get into the blade. Like this, Gary. Like, you know, these small controlled cuts. I'll come up in here and, you know, almost like your mom was cutting potatoes, cutting the eyes out of potatoes. Yeah, I did you know, that hammer too when I was a kid. Come in here and get those small controlled cuts. And that just that's just so if I'm going like this and I'm trying to get that small controlled cut, Gary, <laughs> and I don't I'm not using that thumb assist, I might miss my mark and go past my mark on accident. And yeah, you and know, turn yeah. And, and gouge everything out. Right. And I don't want to do that. I don't want the video to be like an hour long. Me and Gary are gonna sit here and we're gonna continue to teach him how to uh, carve out some spoons and stuff like that. Show him some more carving techniques and things like that. But I got the point across that I wanted to get across. I wanted to handle this thing. This is the first time I've ever handled this. And I wanted to put it side by side with the flex cut because um, I've seen it being compared a lot to it. Uh, 
if this was the exact same thing for 35 bucks, I'd say you need to go out and you need to buy it right now. That being said, in my opinion, it definitely, to be expected, is of lower quality. The blades, a lot of them has, have a lot of jiggle, a lot of wiggle, a lot of flex. Uh, the blades do not lock. It didn't come sharp out of the box. Uh, the blade, okay, so the actual like carving knife is pretty dang sharp. Um, other than that, some of the tools aren't as sharp. They're not as sturdy. So for my money, I would rather save up and get a flex cut. Just my opinion. Take it for what it is. This tool is rock solid. It's been rock solid since I've got it, and I've used a flex cut pretty much since they came out. So for my money, I would rather buyer's remorse, you know, whatever, buy once. This might be something that you buy a couple of. I can see myself breaking a blade or two on this. Just my opinion. So, you know, buying this for 35 bucks, breaking something on it and saying, well, it's just 35 bucks. Uh, next week when I get paid, I'll go pick up another one or order another one. And then two months down the road, ah, I broke this. It's just 35 bucks. Uh, you know, next week when I get paid, I'll get another one on Amazon. You know, now we're in $90. You know, so $100, $125, whatever the price is right now, $150, you know, buy once, you know, buy once. <laughs> so that's just my opinion on it. You guys might have different opinions on it. You might, some of you might have this and you love it. Uh, some of you might have it and you haven't tried the flex cut. And if, if that is the case, I would definitely suggest that you get one of these in your hands. Uh, just from my continual use of this and Gary getting it in his hands for the first time. First time that he's used this and this same day. Gary, come on up here and definitely the flex cut is a far better tool. I'm gonna flat out turn around and say it exactly the way it is. The flex cut is a better tool. It's solid, doesn't flex, doesn't bend. This right here is a more inexpensive tool. If you're starting out just like me, and you don't have the money to invest in a flex cut, yeah, go ahead and get this, sharpen it up, work with it, practice with it, save up your money while you're practicing, and then get you a flex cut. That's just my two cents. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I could go along with that. You know, if you want to get into wood carving and you want to get out here and get in the woods and, and start making spoons and forks and knives and spatulas and <laughs> bowls and cups many many things that i can make with this you know the traps even weapons i mean you name it this is coming handy for a lot of things that i will you know choose to maybe save my main knife on or my neck knife on or you know hey my flex cut will be really good in this situation yada 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 so uh if you're new to it and you you know hey i'm just going to get this see if it's my thing if i want to want to do it is see if i practice with this or something like that i could see that you know pick this up practice with it it's only 35 bucks probably cheaper on amazon probably cheaper here probably cheaper there if he got it at a truck stop i almost guarantee it'd probably be cheaper on amazon <laughs> uh, yeah um about three months ago i turned around and saw where it was like Twenty dollars. Yeah. So. Okay. Truck stops usually have pretty big markups, so you know, I would say you probably get this nineteen ninety nine, twenty bucks, something like that on Amazon. Pick this up. Get it. It's pretty decent. It's not bad. Don't get this video wrong. This is not a bad tool. It's just inferior to this, in my opinion. And that you know, that's maybe inflated ego talking. You know, like oh, Will just likes that one better. No, I do. <laughs> I just like, I like this tool better. It's a lot sturdier. Uh, it handles better. Uh, the ergonomics of the, the tool itself is better. It's, it seems like more of a sturdier tool. That being said, it's also a hundred and XXX amount of dollars more. So, all right, this video is dragged on long enough. Thanks you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, click like down below. It really helps me and the channel out a lot. Uh, what also helps me and the channel is clicking subscribe down below and visiting manusoutdoorsllc.com forward slash shop shopping in the amazon store that helps bring content like this to you guys you know i don't get you know free stuff just handed to me 90 percent of the time i gotta rely on friends to give me stuff like this or you know this is his go out in the woods and do a lot of stuff like that you know going and shopping in the amazon store that helps me and the channel out bringing you videos content like this but all right hope you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully we'll see you out in the woods